this is No Way from No Way Out Radio. Today I wanted to, there seems to be a big problem in America today of, we hear on one side, support a local church, support your local church, go to a local church, get in a church, get in a church. Because they're, to me, they're afraid of the great falling away. The problem is, in many churches today, there is nothing biblical about them. I can start, what you see here on the screen now, this is a picture of the church that I attended for about six to seven years. Now, the problem here is the sins of the church have taken over this church. This church here they have a youth pastor with no youth. He's driven them all out. They play favoritism. They, in my opinion, they misappropriate funds. You know, it's one thing for people to donate for a mission trip. But it's another thing for them to call it a mission trip when it's the deacon's family going on a vacation. And I'm talking 10 11 twelve thousand dollars comes right out of the coffers and all they tell told the parishioners all the time is that uh, God works in mysterious ways praise God for the money for this mission trip and that's a problem but let's look past that I guess for now what I wanted to do is I was very I was very intrigued by people saying go to a church go to a church well I went and I looked at churches around you have this one about five miles up the road from me and it's a funny story with this church this is called the Lakeside Community Church. When the directors of this church, when they wanted to create and build this church, because they, they started off using the school auditorium. Well, of course, you know, church and schools don't mix. So, of course, the hate groups came out, and you, you can't be allowing this church service on a Sunday in our schools. So they went to the Southern Baptist and they told Southern Baptist, you know, we want to build a church, this and that. So of course the Southern Baptists are going to jump on it. And they came all the way up here to Southern Maine and they built this church in a summer. Now, what was funny at this point is now the directors, oh, well, no, we're not joining the Southern Baptist Convention. So off they went. The Southern Baptists left. So I thought, well, maybe they have a different viewpoint than the Southern Baptists. We know the Southern Baptists lately have gone off the deep end with their feministic attacks on masculinity and demanding that women can run the Southern Baptist Convention better than men can, because according to Beth Moore, men are all just male chauvinist, and they're, they're misogynist, and it, she goes on and on, attacking the men of the church. So, once this church was built, my oldest son, about 10, 11 years ago, my oldest son, dating a girl, said, oh, well, we're going to a, a youth night at the Lakeside Community Church. So I would. I would bring him up there and go back and pick him up. Now, one night I thought, well, I'm going to go early and I'm going to see what's going on see what kind of program they have for the youth to teach them about God, to teach them about the truth in the Bible. I was surprised to see the lights turned down, 
the pews moved out of the way, the chairs all moved out of the way, and it's rock and roll music. And it's a dance. It's a social time with nothing biblical about it. Then I asked around, and people that attend the church, this, it's a wonderful church. We're not tied down by the, the hypocrisy of the churches today. I says, well, what Bible do you use? Well, we don't really look at the Bible. We look at the people. So here's a church that's not based in biblical teachings at all. So should I you know, pick this church to go to? Because, well, hey, I can be whatever I want to be. I can, I can view Christianity how I want Christianity to be that fits me, if it's biblical or not. So if we go down through, and then when I got looking at other churches, all these pictures you see, ladies and gentlemen, these are all from churches within a 10 to 15 minute drive from me. Should I go to this one? It's in the next town over. I can't say what their biblical teachings are because I don't know. But one thing I've noticed, where are the crosses? There's no cross on this church. There's no cross on this church. This ain't even really a church. It's just a building. This is the one I went to. No crosses. None. This one here, this one is real particular because this one is about 500 yards down the road from this one. All on Main Street in Sanford, Maine. But what disturbed me about this picture was triangles. We know that the all-seeing eye, the Illuminati, we know that all this symbolism and everything revolves around triangles. So here's a church with no crosses, but distinct triangles drawn and, well, built into the church. With no cross. There's no crosses anywhere. Here we have what they call is the Grace Family Church. This one is very disturbing to me. I have heard parishioners stand in a prayer meeting and out loud ask God to smite the wicked. They jump around, shake, scream, yell. It's crazy to watch. But who am I? to say that that's wrong. But when I hear people openly demanding that God smite the wicked and remove them from the earth, I don't think they quite understand what that means. God is not going to smite the wicked until Christ returns. And when Christ returns, those in dead those dead in Christ shall rise first. Those remaining shall be caught up into the clouds to join with Christ. And Christ shall smite the wicked. But these people think that it's okay to ask God to smite the wicked and remove the wicked from their midst because they don't want to deal with the wicked anymore. That's not right either. That has nothing to do with biblical. You are ask, you are passing judgment upon the people of the earth that you deem to be wicked. But what are you basing that on? So now we come to this church, ladies and gentlemen. What was disturbing here? I want to tell you a little story. A lot of you may know my, my neighbor, the 72-year-old widow 
that has the ducks and the chickens that I play with and I feed and they're my little friends to go along with my chipmunks and all the other wildlife that hangs out here in my yard. Now, I thought something was funny last year when we were talking and and I would talk about the Bible and I would bring out what's going on in society and she seemed kind of standoffish. And then she would say that, uh, yeah, she was on the hiring committee in a church the next town over and she couldn't believe the questions on the application. Here about a month ago she sat down here with my wife and I and we were talking, we were having a coffee and she, she talked about it again that they were having a hard time when they were looking for a new pastor. There's questions in there of you have to openly accept homosexuality. You have to be caring of the transgender and the gender neutral people and the homosexual community. You, you have to embrace them. So then she was a little nervous she said we weren't quite sure because she knows the Bible of what the Bible says about female pastors so she says we were nervous at first but we hired a female pastor and oh she's great because she's all about love we now have our nice little you know, gay pride rainbow flag on the front of the church. And it's, it's all about love. And I was thrown right back. We wonder what's wrong with our churches today. And we wonder why there's no biblical teachings left. And what church should I pick? Should I pick a church that women are in charge? And women hired a woman to be the preacher in this church and they put a rainbow flag when when we look at other churches around the area ladies and gentlemen we have this church let me bring this into to view the right so you can see it of what it is but you look, ladies and gentlemen, this is a church just down the road in the same town of the ones I was just showing you. The one with the triangles and the ones with no crosses. But ladies and gentlemen, what is this? You're in a church and you have the American flag, a gay pride flag and a globalist flag universe ladies and gentlemen what does this have to do with the truth of the Bible is it not being taught today that it was clearly told that the end will be like in the time of Noah or in the time of Lot in the time of Noah, the world was so wicked and so evil and so destructive upon itself, God cleaned it all up. He wiped it all out. Eight people went forth to repopulate and try again. Eight. The rainbow was from God to his people as a promise I am sorry for what I have done and I promise with this rainbow I will never do it again I will never flood this earth again we are given choices Many people don't understand what choices, what that choice means. See, many hate the fact of, 
why should we be condemned for the sins of Adam when they don't have the true biblical teachings of what it means and why it's set up that way? We have free will. Adam and Eve, they had free will. Now, the free will was also their damnation because they were given a choice as we are. Everything that we do in our lives today, we're given a choice. So it's that choice that defines us. It's that choice that defines us to Jesus. Adam made the wrong choice. And because of his wrong choice, all flesh from there on is inherently sinful. Out of the billions and billions of human beings that have been born and passed away on this earth, only one, only one fleshly body walked on this earth sin free. Made all the right choices. That was Jesus. Jesus was the one that this is why he was sacrificed for our sin. This is why he was the lamb and his blood would wash away our sins. Not even Adam and Eve could make the right choice when faced with free will. This is why if God did not send his only begotten Son, to die for us, to show us the, right, the righteous way to live and be, then we would not have salvation because we cannot make the choices, the correct choices for ourselves because we are of sin. And look what we have today. Our churches are creating God the way they want God to be. People are creating God the way they want God to be. This is why our schools are dumbing down our children. Our schools are teaching our children that homosexuality is fine. You can be whatever gender it is that you want to be. Our kids are not taught cursive anymore. They're not taught true history anymore. They're not taught anything except for how to deal with being offended. And that is with anger and violence and rage and resentment for anybody that says anything that the school does not deem acceptable for the weak indoctrinated minds of your children. People want God to save America. But the American people don't even want to save themselves. At some point, you need to make a decision. Do you want God to be what God is? Or do you want God to be what you want God to be? Because if you want God to be the way you want God to be, then you've lost you're not being taught properly. I, I hear it day in, day out by people I have respect for. Church, go to church, go to church, get to a church, find a local church. Which one should I pick? This one? With a gay pride parade, you know, flag? Spitting in God's face? Should I, should I choose this one? It's all triangles. No cross. No cross. Favoritism. Your children don't matter because you aren't worthy. But the deacon's children and my children, they're worthy. Because we taught them properly. But yet they teach of the rapture 
They teach of when you die, we'll pray for you, and you'll go to heaven, and you'll look down upon us. But none of this is in the Bible. They have added to the words of the prophecy, and they have taken away from the prophecy, the words in the prophecy. So how can we put our faith in a heretic? Why support a church that you know engages in at least three of the seven letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation? Why do churches not study and break down the book of Revelation? Because they would have to hold themselves accountable. The book of Revelation teaches us clearly for those that are willing to study the truth. For in the end, it is the church themselves that will condemn the people. The church themselves have, well, not done their job, will not do their job. They have embraced the world and the worldly ways of man and they are now creating a church to cater to man and not praising God. And the second you speak out against this, then of course even the Christians hate you. I would never condemn anybody. I would never even condemn a female preacher because that's between them and God. But that doesn't mean you can shame me into supporting this church when the letters from God to Jesus to the messenger to John were clear. All that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. This is clear that we must listen to these lessons. The book of Revelation is not a chart. It is a book in the Bible, inspired by God through the visions of John, that was imprisoned on Patmos Island. But today, the churches are the problem. There's, look at them, there's just these around me. There's no, there's, there's no crosses, ladies and gentlemen, no crosses anywhere. Not even on top of this one, it's not shown in the picture, but there's no cross. There's no crosses anywhere. Look, look at this one, this is just a building, okay, so they, they want to start a new church. But it's just a little old old brick building. This could be a good one. They're doing what they can to start a church. I can't say. But I can judge these other ones. And I will say, there's something wrong with all of these churches and no crosses. This one. Rainbow flag. But this one. I will get by these churches up here. And I, I want to find the one she goes to. She wouldn't tell me. She told me, you will not like it. You would hate this church. She told me that clearly. Because she knows I am 100% biblical and will stick with 100% biblical, no matter what the repercussions for that truth is. So we have a lot of thinking to do, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of, a lot of things to, we have a lot of things to contemplate within our minds. Do we want to be shamed by man into spitting in God's face? Or do we want to spit in man's face 
and stand with God. If you want America to be fixed, if you want America to turn back to a good path, then you must, by all means, stop catering to evil. Stop catering to those that are destroying the biblical truth that is desperately needed in America today. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is no way out.